Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. Today we've made enough progress in learning the Raspberry Pi that I'm going to be able to get into one of the projects that I'd really hoped it would be able to do and that's be an impromptu console server for accessing either Cisco or Juniper or whatever kind of gear you can think of that has a serial interface for uh, out of band or non-network access so that you can see when there's a problem if it's the network interface or you just need to configure one before you get it plugged into the network so what we have gone and done is i've already got the raspberry pi up and running with a fresh install raspbian on it now the trick on this is getting the right type of usb to serial adapter and there's a whole host of them out there but make sure you get one that uses the prolific 2303 chipset in it and there's a lot of them out there uh, now you should see one of the pictures of the ones I have used in the past. You can get this on Amazon and other places. The beauty of it is, is that Raspbian already understands this. And we'll show it here right now. We'll do LSUSB. And this is a command you should have seen before in one of my other videos. And you'll see right there where it talks about the PL2303 prolific technology. There, there's not going to be prolific's name on the device you probably get, but that's a standard enough chipset to uh to have a feel for for what's going on now the other thing that you'll want to know with this is the port number that has been assigned to it so we'll do d message and we'll pipe it through to grep and we'll look for 2303 in this case since that's what we've already seen with doing the ls usb command okay now we've seen right now if you look at about the fourth line down You'll see where it has been assigned to a TTY USB 0. That's just the first one it has found. You've got two USB ports on the Raspberry Pi, so you can put two more on here. Add a uh, active USB hub, and you can put quite a bit more on. So this can be a very versatile process. So now that we know that it sees this, the next thing we need to do is get some sort of terminal program installed. I've looked at several, and the one that I've had the, the most success with at this point in the game is something called Kermit. So we'll go out, and I've already got my, um, my RPI installed where it's got a network connection. So we will do a sudo apt get install Kermit. And it's going to go out and read the packages and see if it already knows about it and looks like I didn't do that right so oh I know what I did wrong they have it under a slightly different name C Kermit and now we should come back it's taking a little bit longer okay so this is doing what we wanted and we'll say yes and it's going to take just a little bit of of installing here but nothing that, that can't be dealt with Kermit is an old package it's been around for ever since I can remember and I just haven't had really much of a reason to uh, to use it before now, but I'm trying to do everything I can with the RPI from uh, a command line basis, and eventually I'll I'll get into some of the the GUI side, but with working mostly on the uh, the command line side with both Cisco and Juniper, I wanted to you know try to stay true to uh, to that thing. The other thing that I've got is the uh, from Adafruit. I've got their USB to console cable, so I'm plugged directly into the RPI. So if something is not set up right, we'll see it here in case something else happens. And this will be, you know, take just a, a bit to install. And you may decide, and you'll see another video that someone else has done on YouTube where they plug this in and get to it over the network. And that's certainly one option. But if I'm troubleshooting something, this way I can directly go into the RPI, and if there's a problem on the network, I don't have to worry about that, and I've got everything directly cabled in. So now you see what uh, what we've got up and running. Of course, remembering the command that we did before. We'll go back here and pull it just a bit, where you see we're TTY USB 0. Now, the command line syntax to get into Kermit is just Kermit, if I spell it right here, dash L, and then dev... TTY USB TTY USB 0 and then all we have to do at this point is just type connect but Kermit's found a problem it's it sees that it's got a serial port out there but it's not seeing the 
response back that it would look for. So this time around, we can just do a set carrier watch off. And now the next time we do a connect, and we're already into the Cisco device that I've got sitting out to the side, and do the right password here if I can type. And then we're at the enable prompt. So it's just like you're used to here and you know the configs are already there so you can th this shows you very quickly what had to happen so to get out of this terminal session what we'll do is we'll do control backslash and then we'll do C now that drops you back out to your prompt and then we can just type quit and then we have completely closed out of the session that's all there is to it. So you could have just a very simple, very quick USB to serial console server that really at this point, you know, you've got $35 for the RPI, you know, we'll call it $5 for the SD card, uh, $10 for the Adafruit USB to console cable, and we'll call it $15 for the prolific chip-based USB to serial. That's it. Now, to work a, to make this a little bit easier, when you fire it back up, we'll actually create a file that Kermit's going to look for. And at this point, our current director, because I've logged in as user pi, we'll just create the file that Kermit's going to look for. So we'll do a sudo space nano space dot k-e-r-m-r-c. And we're at, now, you've noticed in the past that I have been using secure CRT. I've started going back to Zoc because there's some things that I can get to work better with Zoc, and I'm sure in a future release that secure CRT will probably have that addressed. So what we're going to do is we'll just put our command in here, set space carrier dash watch off. And then to get out, we'll do a control X and we'll say yes to save changes. Yes, we'll do the Kerm RC. That's it. So to go back in, now that we've already got the file, now if we do an ls, you don't see it. The trick is do an ls space dash all. Then you see your Kerm RC file, and that's the only time you'll see it. So now we'll go back through and we'll do a Kermit space dash l space dev tty usb zero. Now. We'll go ahead and type connect. That's the next thing. But see, it didn't give us a prompt this time, so it's gotten past that it's because it's, it it knows, you know, to not even worry about that. And there's all those sorts of commands that you can pull up that can be embedded in a configuration file. I just went with the minimum because this way, if I do a multiple uh, USB implementation, you know, I may want to have different profiles, and there's there's a lot that I haven't figured out yet with Kermit. But this shows you, you know, a very quick and basic process. You've seen how long it took me to get it up and running, so it's it's not very hard at all. Very simple to do, and it's yet one more way that uh, your Raspberry Pi can be a uh, valuable addition to your tool set. We've got uh, some other things on the uh, on the plans to do. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have any questions. Uh, please feel free to uh, contact me via my website, and that's also where you'll be able to see more of a write-up on this, and that's www.ronnutter.com, and thank you again.